Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at an absolutely enormous performance jump that has affected pretty much every single game for Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. So as you can see right here in Super Mario Odyssey in Sand Kingdom, we are running well above 60 frames per second pretty much in every single scenario in this select kingdom, which is in itself one of the most demanding kingdoms in the game. The only kingdoms that I would say are more demanding than this one would be Cascade Kingdom and Metro Kingdom. Now while with this update we have seen a performance uplift of probably around 15 to 16 frames per second, prepare to have your mind absolutely blown because in the Canary version directly after this one that gave us a massive performance increase, they have given us an even bigger one. So this right here is Yuzu Canary version 1814 and as you can very clearly see, this Canary version has given us yet another frame rate boost of well over 20 to 25 frames per second. Now while I did cache most of my shaders before I filmed any footage for this video, you're gonna see that there are gonna be some little stuttery pauses due to the fact that I haven't cached every single one of them and you're gonna see little stuttery pauses just like you saw in the gameplay footage there. Don't be worried, that's just shader compilation and it's absolutely normal to see. But just look at the performance we're seeing in this area, it's absolutely ridiculous. Previously we were only getting around 55 to 60 frames per second, whereas now we sometimes hit 80 and 90 frames per second. It doesn't end there though, performance has drastically improved in absolutely every single area, not only here in Sand Kingdom, but as we're going to show a little later on in the video, in other kingdoms in Super Mario Odyssey and also in many other games. So in this very central area of Sand Kingdom previously, this would actually be around 24 or 25 frames per second and you can very clearly see that we are now running anywhere from about 40 to 55 frames per second. Coming into the center of the village, you're also going to see that performance has dramatically improved. Previously, you would have seen in older videos of mine that I was only able to get a maximum of about probably about 43 to 47 frames per second and as you can very clearly see I'm generally staying around 50 to 60. This area in Sand Kingdom Ruins was also a very problematic area for performance. Generally in any of my videos you would have seen it running at anywhere between around 28 to 38 frames per second whereas right here you can see that we spiked up to 86 frames per second there and generally we stay well over 50 frames per second. Now in watching this footage you also have to remember that while I am getting very good performance when I'm not recording gameplay I usually get around 9 to 12 FPS more. So in any of these areas where you're seeing me getting like 49 or 50 frames per second, when I'm not recording or streaming a gameplay footage I would usually be locked to 60 or over. Moving over to Cap Kingdom, an area that you would also be very familiar with if you've watched any of the videos on my channel, you can also see that right here I am getting well over 60 frames per second, something that was never possible in this area right here before. You'll see when running around my frame rates jumping up to 67, 68, 80 FPS sometimes, it's absolutely insane the amount of performance we are getting when using this new Yuzu Canary version. Now while that previous area Area, generally had okay-ish performance, generally staying around 45 to 48 FPS. The worst performing area in the entirety of Cap Kingdom is definitely this central hub area where if you saw my Let's Play, uh, the very first episode of my Let's Play in fact, you would have seen that this area was performing anywhere between around 32 to 36 frames per second, whereas right here you can see I'm generally staying well over 50 frames per second at all times in gameplay. Play. You're even going to see when crossing this bridge my speeds get absolutely insane and when I come inside of Cap Tower you're going to see the performance absolutely skyrocket to absolutely ridiculous levels. So there you go, I'm in Cap Tower in Cap Kingdom and I'm running at 95-96 frames per second. 
absolutely ridiculous performance levels. Now, while obviously you should just cap your frame rate to 60 frames per second and play the game that way without any desync of audio or animations or anything like that, but I just wanted to unlock the frame rate to show you guys that there is a lot of performance headroom in Super Mario Odyssey and indeed pretty much every other game we're going to be looking at in this video. Let's take a look at one final area in Super Mario Odyssey Cascade Kingdom. So as many of you guys who would have played this area and played through this level in Yuzu, you can attest to the fact that it is an absolute performance hog. In all older Yuzu Canary versions, I was only able to get around 28 to a maximum of around 35 frames per second, whereas right now with this brand new performance update, I am generally staying over 40 frames per second, remembering that when recording I usually drop between 9 and 12 frames per second. This new update has given a huge boost to this level's playability. Another game that has seen a huge performance update is Bayonetta 2 where we have seen a performance increase of about 110 or 120 percent. Previous to this update I was only able to get probably about 35 to 39 frames per second in any of these areas and as you can see right now this game literally runs too fast. You're gonna see slowdown obviously when you're gonna be caching your shaders but performance wise and playability wise this game is a lot better. Unfortunately Unfortunately, as with many other games on the emulator, it still has speed up issues. This game, if you're not aware of it, is a 60 frames per second game, but for some reason on Yuzu emulator, when running at 60 frames per second, it is at two times speed. To make things even weirder, if you slow the game down to 50% speed using the integrated frame locker in Yuzu emulator, you're going to get audio slowdown, so you can't really win and that kind of sucks because I really really like this game and I'm really hoping that it eventually becomes very very playable on this emulator. Moving on once again, let's take a look at our next game, ARMS. As you would have seen in my past few videos for compatibility on Yuzu Emulator, ARMS is very, very playable and on my own 8700K base PC it was running at a basically locked 55 to 60 frames per second. This update has once again shone through, giving us a performance upgrade of about 40 to 50%, making this game even more playable on lower tiered systems than mine. As I've always said, once this game and once Yuzu Emulator gets disc-based shader caches, this game is basically going to be absolutely perfect. And believe me when I say disc-based shader caches aren't that far away in Yuzu Emulator. Hopefully I'll have more concrete information to share with you guys in the next week or so. The developers of this emulator are very very aware of the fact that this is pretty much one of the most highly requested features. Believe me when I tell you guys that they are working absolutely tirelessly to get this feature implemented. So let's move on to another game that I haven't actually covered in quite a while on this channel. Let's take a look at Splatoon 2's performance and compatibility using this new update. So in relation to Splatoon 2 and since I last covered it, a lot has changed and it has gotten significantly both better looking and better performing. When we look to this side of the lobby where all of these NPCs our performance is going to absolutely tank just like we see in Sand Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey or in any of the villages in Breath of the Wild, but when we load into the Octo Canyon you're going to see that in general gameplay when you're actually playing the game, performance is very, very very good. So here you can see, loaded into Octo Canyon, we are getting anywhere from around 54 to 80 frames per second. Very, very good performance indeed. Now Splatoon 2 isn't without its issues though, it is generally very, very laggy and paint doesn't kind of work at all properly. It does work on some surfaces but you're going to see that it doesn't work on all and when you fire it at some walls it just, just doesn't work to be honest and everything is kind of a buggy in relation to a ground and wall rendering. Now while paint does work it seems you can't actually swim or interact with it for some reason and that along with pretty much all of the other rendering and performance bugs are obviously going to have to be fixed. Regardless of that it's well, pretty awesome to be honest, especially when you consider that the last time I took a look at this game it was running at 4 to 5 frames per second and couldn't even load in game at all. 
On to our next game, let's take a look at Kirby Star Allies. This is a game that probably not oddly enough gets recommended and requested for testing quite a lot, and in the last 5 to 7 canary builds of Yuzu, it has seen drastic improvements both to render quality and to performance. Performance has, as I said, and as we've seen with all of the other games, improved in the last 2 builds alone, and it is pretty playable even though you can see in gameplay it's kind of weirdly blurred out like this. Now you can actually fix the graphics if you come to your emulation tab, you come to configure and then you come to your graphics tab. If you turn on accurate GPU emulation you're going to slow your frame rate down but it actually somewhat fixes your graphics. Now if 8fps is playable to you, you can play the game just like this but generally for testing in this video I'm just going to turn off accurate GPU emulation. Unfortunately when you turn it off it goes back to being really blurry and performance does jump up quite significantly, it jumps up from around 8 frames per second to around 60, and when you're in levels you'll see a similar thing, if you turn on accurate GPU emulation it's going to slow down your frame rate and it's going to fix this really blurred out image, but um, as I said, it's kind of playable like this, if you if you want to play the game that badly you'd probably be able to play the game like this, no problem. You're going to see characters are kind of bugged out and while pretty much everything it does work and performance levels are okay, I would say that this is sort of playable, it's um, it's probably not ideal if you really want to play the game to its best actual visual fidelity and performance. Hopefully in the next few Canary versions this is going to be fixed even more than it already has. So let's move on to our final game for testing in this video and a game that I absolutely love, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and how it's now looking and performing in this new update. So as with pretty much all of the other games we've seen, performance has gone up by quite quite a lot. Instead of getting 5 and 6 frames per second in this opening Great Plateau area, I am now getting in and around 15 to 22 frames per second depending on what area I'm in and what direction I'm looking. Very obviously the game is still completely broken graphically, the developers of this emulator are working hard at fixing this and while we have been given some hints that it may be fixed quite soon, it is still obviously still broken in this new version. Regardless of that it's still really cool to see performance go up by 2 or 3 times depending on the area you're in and I'm pretty sure we can all agree that the performance increases we've seen in all of the games I've covered today is absolutely ridiculous and that the developers of Yuzu are doing an absolutely unbelievable job. So that's it for this video guys, if there's any games you want to see me test in this new update, leave them in a comment down below this video. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.